In this video, we'll look at trigonometric quadrants. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify angles and place them in each quadrant and also use them in solving questions that relate to trigonometry. But before we get started with quadrants, I want to shed more light on types of angles for the benefit of those who do not really understand the different types of angles. Now, standardly, you know that we always use 90 degrees as a reference point, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. Now, your 90 degrees is the same thing as your right angle triangle. Your 180 degrees also is the angle on a straight line. The angle on a straight line, you have 180. And your 360 degrees is the angle at a point, or you tell me the angle around a circle. That is your 360 degrees. But apart from these three angles, we'll still be interested in our acute angle, our obtuse angle, and also our reflex angle. Now, let me shed more light on these three angles. Your angle, let's call angle. it angle theta. Theta is less than 90 degrees, but theta at the same time is greater than zero degrees. So that for the acute angle, we're saying that zero is less than theta and theta is less than 90 degrees. That means the angle will lie is less than a right angle triangle is less than 90 degrees. Anything from here, I should have my acute angle. If I have an angle like this, here is theta, that is my acute angle. This is my acute angle. Now, the next angle we should look at is the obtuse angle. Now, for your obtuse angle, your obtuse angle is such that 90 degrees is less than theta, and the same theta is less than 180 degrees. So that you could say that 90 degrees is less than theta, and theta is less than 180 degrees. Now, for the angle to be less than, to be greater than 90 degrees, that means if I have it this way, and here is my 90 degrees, my angle is greater than 90 degrees. It has fallen into this other side. So that here I have theta, I have my obtuse, I have my obtuse angle. Now for the last part, which is your which is our reflex angle, our reflex angle is greater than our reflex angle theta is greater than 180 degrees, and the reflex angle theta is less than is less than 360 degrees. So that we're saying that 180 degrees is less than theta, and theta is less than 360 degrees. So if I have my baseline this way, obviously this is my 180. Now, and if this is a center point. Now, I've gone around this way. My angle, my reflex angle could be anything around this. So, here is my reflex angle. It is greater than 180 degrees, but it is less than 360 degrees. So, the angle theta here will become my what? My reflex angle. That's my reflex angle. Now, let's begin to see our quadrants. Let's get started with the trigonometric quadrants and their reference angles. Now, we know that a circle, the circle has 360 degrees. So if the circle has 360 degrees, we know the circle has 360 degrees. Let's get started with the trigonometric quadrants and reference angles the circle at 360 degrees now i want us to use the cartesian coordinate to divide this circle into four equal parts now this is from my cartesian coordinate this is my y and obviously this is my x now this is the first part we'll call this my first that's the first quadrant We'll call the second part my second quadrant. 
I will call this my third quadrant, and this is the fourth quadrant. Now, if you go by the Cartesian coordinate, you know that y here at the top, here is zero. Here at the top, y is positive, and at this part, here is x. x at this part also is positive. While the x at this side is negative, this is negative x. And the x at this, the y at this side is what is negative y. Now, going with that knowledge, let us let me draw it properly. I want to draw the Cartesian coordinate properly so that make it easier for us to work. Now, the angle at here at the first coordinate, at this first coordinate, if we start from x here, we'll take x here as our reference line. If you start this way and you come down here, you have 90 degrees. If you come to this x at the negative side, you already have 180. That is the angle on a straight line. That's 180 degrees. Now, if you move from here and you come down here, you have 270. And by the time we come back here, we have our complete circle, which makes the 360 degrees. In the first quadrant here, in the first quadrant here, if I draw an angle here, a line here, I have an angle here. Let's call this angle theta. Obviously, the angle here called theta is less than 90 degrees. So in this first quadrant, we know that all is positive. That is, the sine of theta, the cos of theta, and the tan of theta in this quadrant is positive. Now, why? Look at it this way. This is y, and obviously, this is x. Now, if I, if I take down here, I mirror it down this way, this is still my what? My y. My y at this part is positive. My x is positive. So if I'm talking of my sine theta, my sine theta here will be called so positive x over, let's call this h, over h. That's positive. And my cos theta also, my cos of theta at this point will also be equal to, sorry, my sine, sorry, my sine is equal to positive y. But my cos, that is the adjacent over hypotenuse, will be equal to the positive x over h. And if I talk of tan theta still in this same quadrant, I'll be talking of opposite over adjacent. That will be my y over x. Both of them, the three of them are all positive. But if I move into the second quadrant, in my second quadrant, if I draw my angle this way, and the second quadrant comes here this way, such that the angle is between, the angle here is, is, is greater than 90, but is less than 180. If this angle here is greater than 90 and it's less than 180, that means it's in the second quadrant. At that point, this becomes my reference angle. It's in the second trigonometric quadrant, and this becomes my reference what? Angle. Now, let's draw that out so that we can now begin to pick the characteristics of that, of that quadrant. Permit me to draw it out this way. Now, here is the angle. Here is my reference angle. Here is the y here. Here is the x. This time, the x already is in the negative. Here is my reference angle here. Now, so that my reference angle here, if this is theta here, let's call my reference angle here alpha. My reference angle here is now 180 minus theta. That's because of what? Alpha. That's the reference angle in the second quadrant. So to get this, you understand that x here is negative, but y here is what? Is positive. So look at it this way. Sine alpha, which is a reference angle, will be equals to will be equals to y that's opposite over hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is still h, y over h. Then cos alpha is equals to cos alpha is equals to minus x over h. And tan alpha is equals to y over minus x. So in this quadrant, we'll say that only sine is positive in this quadrant. Why? Because both cos and tan, they have negative values. So it is only sine that is positive in this quadrant. Now, so here you know that sine is positive in this quadrant. 
Let's look at the third quadrant. Now look at the third quadrant. In the third quadrant, I have it this way. My angle has moved 90, 180, and I'm going to 270. Obviously, here is my reference angle here. Now, so that if the total angle here, theta, let's call this theta, we'll call my reference angle here alpha, like we did initially, so that for the reference angle here, you know that the reference angle here is the same thing as, let's say this is, that's alpha is equals to 180 plus or plus, okay, okay. The total angle here is theta and here is alpha, sorry. For the reference angle here, we'll say that my theta is equals to 180 plus alpha. So the reference angle will be gotten from theta is equals to 180 plus alpha. That's obviously it will come from theta minus 180, which is equals to alpha. Now, so that if I now need to calculate, to check the characteristic features, if I now need to check the characteristic feature of alpha, look at it this way. You see that here is a negative axis. You have x in the negative. Here also you have y also in the what? In the negative so my cos alpha will be equals to negative x let's call the hypotenuse h still that's adjacent over hypotenuse negative x over h my tan my tan alpha will be equals to negative x over negative that's opposite over hypotenuse negative y over negative x this negative cancels this so i have y over x and for my sine alpha in the third quadrant we'll be talking of opposite over hypotenuse that's negative y over h so if you look at it carefully you see that cos in this quadrant is negative tan in this quadrant is positive and sine in this quadrant is also what is negative so in this third quadrant we can conclude that only tan is what is positive only tan is positive in the first quadrant we establish that all are positive in the second quadrant we establish that sine is positive in the third quadrant, we establish that tan is what is positive. And now let's take a close look at the fourth quadrant. Let's look at the fourth quadrant. Now let's, with our Cartesian coordinate once more. Now my fourth quadrant, my angle now should be in the fourth quadrant this way. So that in this quadrant here, if this is theta, here will be my reference angle. Let's call that alpha like we've always done. Here is my x. Here is y. But my y this time around is negative y. And let's call my potenose h. Now here is still my y. That's my negative y. You agree with me that sine of alpha in this place is equal to negative y over h. Cos of alpha in this place, in this fourth quadrant, is equal to x over h and tan of alpha tan alpha is equals to opposite over hypotenuse that's negative y over x so in this quadrant only cos is what is positive in this quadrant sine is negative and tan is what is negative in conclusion we can conclude that for each of the quadrant here, yeah, all is positive in this quadrant, sine is positive in this quadrant, tan is positive in the third quadrant, and in the fourth quadrant, cos is positive. That brings us to an acronym that can help us easily remember it. We call the acronym, you can call the acronym ACTS. Every time you remember ACTS, you can easily remember how to divide your trigonometric quadrant with their reference angles here in the first quadrant all is positive in the fourth quadrant cos is positive that means we've gone we've gone clockwise 
but the original route is the anti-clockwise route. But just for memory's sake, you call it what? At. All is positive here. Cos is positive in the fourth quadrant. Tan is positive in the third quadrant. And sine is positive in the second quadrant. Let's take some examples. We have to find the value of 1 sine 245 degrees. Now, if you look at sine 245 degrees, if you go by the quadrant, this is 90 degrees, 180. Definitely 275 is between 180 and 45 degrees. If 200 is between 180 and 45 degrees, that means 245 degrees is in the third quadrant. Now, and from our arts, arts, you know that tan is the only one that is positive in this quadrant. Sine in this quadrant is negative. That means sine 245 degrees is equal to minus sine of that 245 degrees is the same thing as 180 plus 65. That is equals to minus sine 65 degrees. Now, what is sine 65 degrees? From my calculator, sine 65 degrees is the same thing as 0 0.9, 0 0.9063. That's minus 0 0.9063. Now, if you go by, let's go for the tan 262. Obviously, tan 262, 262 degrees is also in this same quadrant. But in this quadrant, you know that tan is what is positive. So that tan, I can say that tan 262 is the same thing as the tan of 180 plus 262 is the same thing as 180 plus 180 plus 82 degrees. That's 180 plus 82. That's a tan of 82 degrees. Remember that tan is positive in this quadrant. So if I take the tan of 82 degrees, that's 7 point, that's a tan of 82 degrees. That's 7.115, 7 1154. So you see how to use how to use this how to use quadrants to actually solve these questions. You can easily use four figure table for those who use four figure table, or you can simply use your calculator. See you in our next class. We'll look at sign rule. We'll look at sign rule, and we'll also look at its application. Thank you for staying with us.